Please welcome Julian Jeffrey Lopez, representing the class of 2017. President Lachman, members of the Board of Trustees, members of the President's Cabinet, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, family and friends of the graduates, and my fellow classmates. It is an honor to address you here today. And on behalf of the class of 2017, I would like to thank you all for the support you have given us this last few years. I can tell you with certainty that the people wearing caps and gowns sitting in front of me will be leaders in some shape or form. For those of you who don't know me, giving this speech has long been a dream of mine. For those of you who do know me, you know that the next eight minutes are about to get intense. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> Class of 2017, I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be hard. The world has changed in the last few years, and it is up to us to determine the type of society that we want to be. But what exactly do we need as we look towards the future? Well, we need, a, we need a shift towards more inclusive dialogue and discourse within our communities and the political sphere. We need to move away from extremism and respond with moderation. We need a focus towards more sustainable policies and practices that will showcase our commitment to preserving the environment while taking into account communities other than ours. <laughs> Last, we need a universal desire to unite people from around the world, regardless of their race, color, nationality, ability, sexual identity, age, gender, or religion. We must realize that it is not about me, you, or them. It is about us. The truth is, we need one another in order to progress as a society, and it is time for all of us to notice that. Humanity is not based on the belief that we should just worry about ourselves, but rather on the hope that we will stand by one another, work with each other, and share our thoughts and values in order to make progress. Never treat anyone as lesser because of the role that they play in our society. We need business people to help us drive the economy. We need garbage haulers or our streets would be dirty. We need artists to continue building on our culture. We need politicians, uh, okay. We constantly hear stories on the radio, read articles in the newspaper, and watch TV reports on atrocities that are currently taking place in our world. But they all seem too far away from us for us to truly connect with them. My message for us is the following. The problems that our world faces, they are not just a story. They are reality. Here's a challenge that lies ahead of us. There are too many issues in this world that need solving. And we can no longer sit with our arms crossed and hope that they fix themselves. The United Nations just declared the largest humanitarian crisis since 1945. We have the war in Syria, the Middle East, civil wars and famine in Africa, human rights violations in Myanmar, race tensions within the United States, wars on drugs in Mexico, Central and South America, terror attacks all throughout Europe, numerous refugee crises, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As your speaker on this significant day, I ask that we do everything we can as citizens of this world to embrace our differences rather than disregarding and condemning those who do not think like us. But There are many more issues that our world faces. And in order for us to tackle the biggest challenges that lie ahead of our generation, 
we must always think about sustainability. This is one of the key concepts that will define our future as a society inhabiting this world. This concept not only applies to the environment, but also to policies and practices that we take on a daily basis. Think about refugees. Representatives of various states and leaders of the world believe that getting people out of war-torn areas is enough. But where do these people go from here? They are not being welcomed or accepted by other societies, and they can't go back home and find that there is no stable government, no security, no hospitals, no schools, no food source, nothing. Just a devastated land that they once called home. We have all heard the phrase, with great power comes great responsibility. But I hope you will all accept my modification of this phrase, which applies to our times. With great privilege comes great responsibility. It is imperative that we understand our privilege as we wear these caps and gowns. Throughout my travels around the world, I've seen poverty and starvation. I can only speak for myself, but I assume that many of us in the audience today share the same privilege of never going to sleep hungry and worrying that we won't have enough money to pay for food the next day. We must understand that only 6.7% of the world holds a college degree. It is our education and the privileges that come along with it that drive me and many others to wake up every day and try to make a positive difference in the world through our actions. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said, the test of our progress is not whether we add more to the abundance of those who have much, it is whether we provide enough for those who have little. I'm not here to give us more homework now that we are graduating, but I believe it is our moral obligation to do at all times what we know is right. I'm going to repeat this. It is our moral obligation to do at all times what we know is right. Be a part of helping people get the same opportunities we've had, such as education. Allow them to think about what they want instead of having to worry about what they need. We need to stand together as a global society now more than ever, regardless of whether you choose to live in Argentina, the United States, Belgium, Namibia, Kazakhstan, or Australia. We need to help our peers and neighbors receive the same opportunities so we can stand together as we fight intolerance and invite compassion into our lives. People say the younger generation will be the one that decides what happens with the world. Children are the future. They are right, but we are the present. And this is our reality. I urge and hope that each and every person in the audience today, whether or not you are a graduate, becomes a positive leader by example. So what can you actually do? These are all big ideas, and all of you are as clueless about the world as I am. It's simple. Use your passions to guide you into choosing how you will make a difference. Volunteer at a hospital, at a food shelf, or at the nearest refugee center. Serve your community with whatever resources you have, be it time, money, skills, food, or shelter. Let's show the world how selfless we can really be. As I, bid you, as I bid you all farewell, I would like to remind you of Champlain College's motto, Odeamus, which in English means, let us dare. Now that we are graduating, I would like to change the college's motto. <laughs> and instead of saying, let us dare, I would like us to say, let's make it happen.
Champlain College has given us the tools and motivation to make a positive difference in our world. And it is up to us to do that. Class of 2017, it's been a pleasure. And I can't wait for us to make it happen. Thank you. <laughs>